reaction video. It is a video of opinion. Nothing personal is meant toward the individuals in the videos. My volition uh, for posting these reaction videos is to look at these videos and critique them through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Usually they are quantum grammar related videos and I'm looking for correct sentence structure knowledge here. And I'm also looking at the claims made in the videos through the lens of correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. Keep in mind the information, the things that I'm sharing in this video are for educational purposes only entertainment purposes only, nothing personal towards the individuals in the videos themselves. Yeah, how's everybody doing out there? Coming at you with another Coral Blade Grotto broadcast reaction video. This is not an audit. It's just my kuleana to what I'm watching on screen. Now this is from four years ago from the Justinian Deception YouTube channel. This was sent to me by a very good friend and student and they just wondered if I'd seen this and I, I hadn't seen it and uh, however it's not too much of a surprise to me what is said in here now the gentleman in this video uh, their name I think is Rohan Lorian and to the best of my knowledge I believe he is partnered with Romley Stewart and also, with the best of my knowledge, I think he might have gone to prison or is still in prison because folks and the Internet have told me that Romley Stewart's partner or friend went to prison. Because I was reading some comments on a Romley video and it said, hey, I hope your partner gets out of jail soon or something like that or help Romley get his friend out of jail, or whatever it is. So that's unfortunate. I would never wish that on anybody, no matter who they are, what they say, what they're doing, unless, of course, they are a violent criminal harming other, harming other folks, all right? Then they get what they get. But if they are simply trying to mind their own business and be left alone by the system and enjoy their their family and their in their life, then no, I don't wish anything bad upon them. No matter what kind of grammar they use, I don't care. I'm not like these other folks out here, like, I guess I won't name any names, who want you to go to prison and get arrested for using grammar. <laughs> Bro, lighten up. All right, so... Here we go. Let's hear what this individual has to say, and then I will comment on it. Uh, oh, we keep getting a lot of comments on David Wynn Miller. Um, Rom's had uh, the privilege of meeting David at one of his events. Uh, I believe that there were certain questions that couldn't be answered. Guys, certain questions that couldn't be answered. Which ones were those, Rohan? Can we be specific about this? Uh, can we have any reasons? for uh, what you're saying here, some evidence. When we look at what he does, there might, might be some merit in it. I haven't gone right into it, but I can tell you straight up, the use of all capitals and the use of hyphenation is American Sign Language. Is that what it is? It's American Sign Language according to what? However, he's still doing it with English grammar. So once again, he's making this sort of fake diglossic language format that can't be read and there's no formal styles manual for. Oh, Rohan needs a formal styles manual for his grammar. So what's that styles manual? The Chicago manual of styles? Well, if that's the case, then guess what holds jurisdiction over Rohan's grammar? The Chicago styles manual. Guess what doesn't hold jurisdiction over quantum grammar? Chicago Styles Manual. There is a formal styles manual for correct sentence structure, communication, parse, syntax, grammar. And if you have closure on the grammar, that would be created by you as authority of your grammar. 
you would create your own dictionary, your own styles manual, how things work. If you choose to do that in accordance with the rules of correct sentence structure, communication, parsing, syntax, grammar, that's completely up to you. And if you do use the rules of correct grammar in the mathematical interface, and I have a dictionary and a styles manual, and you have a dictionary and a styles manual, then you and I should have no issues contracting at all. That will be con uh, correct contract, mathematically certified forwards and backwards. That's how it works. And as this gentleman just said, well, maybe David Wynn Miller's stuff has merit, but he doesn't really know why. Because he has no clue how it works. And Romley Stewart definitely has no clue how it works. I've shown that in the past. And also, Romley Stewart has completely dismissed any evidence of open-mindedness to learn this because I have offered him a, a free workshop to explain this to him or to answer any questions he may have about it. Like, I have come out, gone out of my way to do this, and he just doesn't want anything to do with it, which is very interesting. And this individual is basing what he's saying in this video upon secondhand knowledge of what Romley said after a 30-minute or 15-minute meeting with David Wynn Miller. Does that make much sense to you that someone would dismiss something like that after no knowledge of it whatsoever? To me, that just smacks of, well, if it ain't easy, I don't want nothing to do with it. All right? If it doesn't fall within my uh, framework of how things should be, then I don't want nothing to do with it, which is fine. It's, it's their choice to do that. Um, the other thing I can say about it is I've, in six plus years of teaching this to hundreds of folks all over the earth, all over the earth, Australia, New Zealand, uh, the Netherlands, Denmark, Britain, England, Mexico, uh, Jamaica, um, of course, Canada, you know, North America, South America, all over the place. Let's put it that way. All different cultures. Oh, yeah, Spain. All different cultures, all different types of folks. And uh, I have only had one time in those hundreds and hundreds of workshops where an individual actually was able to grasp the rudimentary concepts of the grammar in 60 minutes. Only one individual in 60 minutes had a rudimentary grasp of it. Unfortunately, because they didn't follow up on it, they lost it. They lost their grasp of it because they didn't continue to practice until it actually formed a, a, a nucleus in them and a basis which with they could build from. But in that flash moment of 60 minutes, they did understand it for a moment for a now space moment. So Romley Stewart meeting with David Wood Miller and supposedly there were questions that were unanswered. I can't really comment on that because this guy isn't giving up the beans. He's not giving up the tea as to what questions those, those were. But I'm sure the followers of Justinian Deception and Rohan and Romley won't question that at all. They'll just do the old uh, appeal to authority thing and just take Rohan at his word and Move on to the next thing. Remember we are talking about a standard and a non-standard language? Well, he's using an anti-language. He's just made this up. Uh, and unless you've got a contract with David Wynn Miller, you really can't read it and don't know what is assigned to it. That is in parts true and in parts not true. It is a standard. Like, well, what does the word standard mean in, in the common everyday plain, simple English. A standard is something that is a commonality, right? If you use plain, simple English, that, is that considered a standard language, form of communication? Yes, of course it is. Uh, most of my viewers speak that language, whether it's their first language or second language, and, and they comprehend it. So that would be considered a standard language. If you learn correct sentence structure, communication, policy, syntax, grammar, you become conversant in it, or to use a fiction term, proficient, then that would become the standard language and method of communication between you and others who also grasp this mathematical interface on grammar. Then it would be standard. 
And you would have dictionaries and styles manuals that are standard. But you can't enter that room unless you gain the knowledge to punch in the code to the door, if you know what I mean. And you get to that through study, which, need I mention, there are almost a thousand, around a thousand videos on this channel right here that are free to you to study. And you can learn the grammar through this channel. Or you can, if you're serious, really serious about it, you can contact me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com and apply for workshops. So you have to gain that foothold, you know, so you can open up the, the door and walk into that room so it is standard for you to be correct in your grammatical contracts. But again, these folks don't really know anything about that. And uh, it's their choice. As I said, it's their choice. What's the first, you know, usual knee-jerk reaction to someone who gains a bit of knowledge about a topic and they're approached with something that differs from what they're doing and it's not easily accessible. It's not easy to grasp right off the bat. What's, what's someone's normal reaction to it? They dismiss it. Not only do they dismiss it, they probably begin to revile it, to be derisive towards it, to low key, you know, make fun of it. Now I can say this folks, of my knowledge of the history of this grammar technology and the gentleman that, well, David Wimbler brought it to the public. And then of course he had a student, an underling named Russell J. Gould. And they went around doing seminars and stuff. And I can say that my knowledge of, of public data that's out there, any sort of, I guess what you could call big name individual that tried to come together with them to do anything to, to, you know, coalesce and work together to do something. It never worked out. I have my guesses as to why that is, but I'll start naming names. If you go back, for example, on the uh, project Camelot, with Carrie Cassidy. You all remember that? That's going way back. Um, she would have David Wynn Miller on there talking about this grammar, and she was so dismissive and derisive, in my opinion, in my view of David. But David never lost his cool, really, on that show. And uh, Russell, after, I think, oh, I can't really say for sure whether... David was still alive at this moment or not. It was in either 2017 or 18, where she was going to have on Russell J. Gould, Sergeant Robert Horton. No, not Sergeant Robert Horton. I think there was another guy they were going to have on. But anyways, and Anna Von Reitz, i.e. Anna Von Reitzinger. You uh, folks out there that are into common law and things like that probably are familiar with Anna's name. But basically, Russell ghosted that show. Didn't show up at the last minute and left Anna hanging. And Anna has written about Russell and David. I think she also met David. And she said it's a bunch of baloney. Why? Well, there's, as I said, there's a few reasons that could go in behind that. The first reason, which I'm almost 99.9% sure, uh, sure of, it can't be explained in an hour or 30 minutes or even a day. I mean, it's something that has to be repeated and repeated because there are certain patterns that have to be adjusted in our thinking in order to begin to have this knowledge take root. It's a process. And most folks are not going to get it. And she's no exception. And so because they couldn't explain it to her, and again, I have to say, based upon the public of publicly available documents of David Wimmel and Russell J. Gould, there's mistakes all over them. So if they were trying to explain that to her, 
and she has a very discerning mind, she's going to start seeing inconsistencies between what they're saying and what's on the documents because there's mistakes. Whether they know it or not know it, whether they're intentional or not intentional, they're there. And someone who's sharp as a tack will see that and ask about it. And how are they going to answer that? If they answer it, well, I put them there on purpose so people don't blah, blah, blah. Well, that's the biggest bullshit thing I've ever heard in my life, pretty much. Someone to say something like that. Yeah, I purposely put something wrong on there because I want people to learn it for themselves. Oh, they got in trouble and went to jail for something I put on the paper that's wrong purposely? Oh, well. Come on, folks. That's what we call a jip or a cop-out. And any other reason in, in my, this is my humble perception, it comes down to ego. All these folks with my perception do have egos. And their cups are probably not empty when they meet each other. David Miller is no exception. He was very kind. He was very uh, helpful. So nice. Never mean, never mean spirited or malicious. Um, always on point, pretty much. He did have an ego, though. It was huge. Some folks could give a reason for it, being, well, yeah, there is a reason for that ego. However, I think I'm just saying that's an issue probably because. Anna von Rietz probably has an ego as well, which you can tell by the way she communicates with people who disagree with her. You can tell anybody's ego by the way they communicate with people who disagree with them. Now, if people that disagree with someone are rude, that's different. But if someone's just asking questions and the questions get too um, pointed, and the person that's supposed to answer doesn't have the answers, they're going to feel pressed probably. And if they have an ego, then they're going to start to get hostile. I've seen it a million times. Hopefully, I don't do that. I only get hostile if you approach me hostile. Then I'm more than willing to give you all my hostility and let that out on you. I don't care because you brought it first. You get what you get, right? Uh, but I never approach anyone hostile. Never, never, never. That's just not part of the position of peace and neutrality. Uh, maintenance of rule, run rule equal. Or the balance of the honor and the grace. All right. But if someone approaches me hostile, then those things are off the table. Forget it. I'm going both barrels. I don't care. You came. You saw. And I did you know what. Anyways. Russell J. Gould, same thing. I could imagine if Anna met with Russell, how that would have went. Because at least David Wynn Miller had some etiquette and seemed to be very kind. And not in a fake way either. Not in a fake way. Not in a saccharine way. You can just watch Russell's videos, and this is my own personal perception. You can hear him go into this saccharine type of tone of voice. With my perception, it's mildly condescending. And it's sort of fake when he says, I'm kind, I'm just trying to be humble. And I'm teaching these people because they have to learn, you know, the type of voice I'm talking about. It just doesn't ring true to me. I mean, some folks may eat that stuff up like cotton candy, not me, because that's exactly what it is. It's empty calories to me. So to get back to my main point, when you get folks with uh, egos like this or, or sta some sort of imagined standing in this domain of outside the system, so to speak, like Romley Stewart, Rohan here, or Ina von Rietz, or Sasha Stone, or who else? Lady Crown, or I, name, name your, your figurehead, whoever you want. Although I got to say, I got to say, I shouldn't have put Lady Crown in there, really, because I never got that impression from her at all. 
Apologies. Stop and correct. Stop and correct. The Lady Crown was with the humility, as far as I know. Uh, my perception of her. However, uh, we did have a contract. I did was I was going to work with the Purple Thumb community and things like that, but uh, they she broke confidentiality and uh, did not perform on the agreements that we had with regards to their issuance of their live life claim. But this was years ago. This is water under the bridge. I'm saying now that out of all the folks I mentioned, she doesn't belong in there. She doesn't belong in there. But otherwise, all the rest of them, I'm pretty sure they have pretty big egos. And that's why those things will clash. Some folks might say the same thing of me. And of course, I would have to humbly disagree with that. Because some of my best students now stand pretty much on equal footing with me. And we do work together at times. And I have no issue with that. I don't have to be the head honcho. If I know that you know what you're doing, I have no problem giving up the reins. I don't. But you have to prove that you know what you're doing. I'm not going to condescend anybody either. Again, unless they come at me hostile, then they get whatever. Both barrels. Bing, bang, boom. Pra, pra. All right. That's it for this one. Hope you enjoyed this little uh, dissertation at the end here. Um, got some big things coming up. Going to be doing a, a confidential 60-ish minute Q&A where folks can donate a minimum of $11. You can donate more if you want to, but a minimum of $11 to attend. I have not given out specific details yet. I'm just putting this out there in the, in the ether. If you're interested in it, I'm looking to get about 33 folks. And then you will get a recording of this live confidential Q&A workshop. So this will give folks a chance to write down all the questions that they have. I don't care what it's about. I don't care if you ask about the grammar. I don't care if you ask about postal mechanics, banking mechanics, flag mechanics, grammar mechanics. I already said that. Uh, David Wynn Miller, Russell J. Gould, Live Life Claim, the fiction legal system. Doesn't matter. Ask whatever you want. Live. I will answer it during this uh, now space continuum period oh yeah coming up on the 17th which is the late colon david ivan wayne colin miller's birthday i will be doing a live stream at zero nine one one hundred hours eastern now space detroit time so hop on board for that that'll be a fun one i got some fun things lined up and uh be well, be kind. Mm -hmm.